Let's get over our man, Mr. Tim Orders, who do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, it's uh, it's kind of interesting here. Yes. Uh, we we got out of our long position last Friday, and the market kind of went sideways and, yeah. and tried to break out today. Um, actually, just, let's go to chart number one. Okay. I have it. Yeah, real quick. Yep. Yeah, this, it, you got to really kind of look at the bigger picture, what's going on. And uh, anyhow, the, the bottom window is uh, the 10-day average of the trend. Next window up is a 21-day average. That's like a month, 21 yes. trading days a month. The one above that is a six three day average, which is like three months. Right. And when all three of those get into bearish territory, which is that um, pink area pink. at the yep. bottom, I can see it of each deal. Yeah. So all three of them got there about you know probably uh, looks like the end of June or sometime in June, uh, maybe mid June or something like that. So you kind of be careful. Yeah, markets still move higher, but. I've listed the times in the past when those all three reached uh, those bearish levels, and that's uh, red lines down from the top. Okay. Um, so and sometimes they're they're right on the market. Sometimes they keep moving higher, but all of them really come near highs. Uh, the last one we had came in, you know, looks like about December, January of 2022. Right. Um, uh, so it was a little bit. I guess a little bit late, pretty much right on the money, but it kind of stayed bearish. That was kind of a big warning that there was something developing. And so I was kind of looking at that, and also I was kind of looking at, you know, we're running into the uh, February, March, April of 2022 highs, also right at this uh, 460 range. Right. And so um, I was kind of looking for an excuse to get out. Uh, so that that kind of helped. And, you know, flipped it. Chart two. Hey, I got a question for you first, Tim, right? You know, years right. ago, right, you know, you only looked at the 10-day trend, right? So did yeah. you pick up, I mean, I know how much work you do on the market in general, which is awesome. Um, so did you just, just decide that, hey, man, I had to do more work in this trend? Because what happens, folks, is that the average trading days per month is 21 days. That's why I'm suspecting, you know, you got a month and you got three months, which is 63. So how did you get to that level? Why did you, start, why did you do that? Well, it's actually I started screwing around with a hundred day. Okay, and hundred day didn't really didn't do much for me. Then I uh, see, and I started thinking, you know, you got to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, because once you hit these targets, you know, you're going to get some resistance because the market right. when the, when the you know the, the ten day, the twenty one day, and the six three day all get kind of exuberant. In other words, all get in bearish territory. Yes. You know, the market just runs out of fear to the upside. The market goes up on fear. Remember Joe Granville? Oh, yeah. He said... The generals. Um, I love them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if he's still alive, but he always said that uh, the market rallies, uh, what was his term? Um, There's is, is another word for fear, but anyhow, the market goes up on worry. I'll put yep. it that way. It's okay. Right. Can't I can't remember the exact quote. Yeah, he pa he passed away. He did pass away. Go ahead. Yeah, but I, you know it's funny. Yeah, I, yeah. I I not funny. I, I had him on about about maybe a year before he passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. Yeah, I, uh, I I actually went. This is off the subject a little bit, but I was living in Denver at the time, and one of my clients and I were. Uh, he wanted me to go to his uh, 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 seminar. Yes. And um, anyhow, the, the whole place was packed. There's probably about 500 people in this room. Yes. And I forgot what, it was like 100 bucks to get in and stuff. Yeah. Well, anyhow, it was like a two or three hour. And all he did was on this stage, he had a puppet. And he put this puppet on his knee. And all he kept saying was, the market needs fear, the market needs uh needs to be scared and all this other stuff. And he said that for about two hours. No indicators, no screens, no uh, no nothing else. Wow. Just that. <laughs> and and did he play the piano for you? Huh? Did he play the piano? Because he played the piano, you know. Uh, you know, he might have been so long ago. Okay. But it, I mean, wild. <laughs> it, was, it was really, yeah, it was wild, you know. And <laughs> but, but the guy, you know, he was right on the market. So whatever, you know. <laughs> 
whatever makes sense makes no, sense. No, I'm I with you. Makes we get him, it. But. We get it. Cool. So, but anyhow, but getting back to this, this is kind of that that same scenario. Yes. And he really didn't have a, uh, he, he more like felt the fear, I guess. And so I put it in terms right. of de- defining what fear really is. Sure. And that's the, you know, advanced decline and volume type indicators. And this is one of them. So the more fear you got, uh, the better it is for the market to drive higher. And you don't have any fear or, you know, they always talk about, uh, complacement. Right. You know, um, and this kind of identifies that it doesn't really. No, it does. Because exact. Yeah, it nails it pretty close. You no, know, it, it does. You well, you, what you can see here, folks, stuff. what this does, this is saying for three months, okay, when you get that trends, that no one was paranoid at all. That it's like, hey, I got to buy the market. Hey, we got to buy the dips. I got to buy everything. So that's a long period of time. There's no doubt about it, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyhow, that's, uh, so I know we're getting close. And I know we we're running into uh, the high. Actually, what was your question? Uh, no, oh, no, that you, you answered it because you went through the hundred day and then you start bringing it down. I'll do the twenty one day and the sixty three days. The hundred day didn't do anything for you. I get, I get it. I, I just was curious because I could see that you were going month by month because of the twenty one sixty three. So that makes right. sense because if there's no fear for three months, well, that I mean that's a long time with no fear. So yeah, I'll jump right. to the next that's, chart. Right. That's okay. this. So you, you got people complacent now. You know, you had them pretty. You know, bearish back in uh, looks like about April. You know, February, April, May. Everybody was kind of scared, which was uh, uh, going back to that. So, uh, you know, if you go back to that six-three day trend reading, you had a uh, um, you know like a one point one on the trend for three months in a row. That's quite a bit of fear on a six-three you know a three months time frame. Okay, that's the reason why I kind of was bullish in that time frame. Yeah, you know, everybody was kind of scared. Well. This really identifies what the public's thinking. Right. You know, if they're scared, that trend's high. Right. And if they're not scared, that trend's low. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, so, anyhow, that's, that's how I kind of define it thing. Nice. So, so, you really are standing on the opposite side of everybody else when you look at this indicator. Right. And that's where you want to be. Exactly. You, uh, right. You, you, got, you got to be where the smart money is, I guess. Right. So. Uh, so anyhow, we go to the next chart. Yes, I have it up. And uh, uh, this is uh, anyhow. This is where uh, you can see it a little bit better. And so we're testing the um, March, of, or actually it's February, March, and April 2022, and we're running into those highs there. And when I put this chart out to you yesterday or today, this morning, uh, the next window below the SPX chart. Yes, is that SPX VIX ratio, and it actually at the time. It was making new highs, which wasn't uh, bearish. If you look at it now, it's making lower highs. Here we so, go. I like it. Yeah, so it's, it's starting to, to diverge now. I think you're too quick to go short here. Okay. Because if you look at to, if you look at today's volume, we're probably going to draw a bearish engulfing pattern. Yeah, yeah. Just and stay. We're going to have higher volume today than the last several days. Just but stay there, Tim. Today's high is going to be tested. Wait. We're going to quick break, Tim. We're going to be right back. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We are looking at a, uh, a chart right now. And don't forget, folks, all these programs are archived. So if you happen to be in your car listening, uh, you know, you can pull these up at night. You can see these great charts that uh, Tim sent over. Uh, so right now, Tim, I have the S and P chart up. All right. So chart number two. Yes, chart number two. All right. Um, only thing I really uh, this is kind of it makes it a little bit more clear, I guess you might say, that you know if you look at the uh, March or the February, March, uh, and April of 2022, you can see it, you know, circled in blue there. You can see we're running into that resistance area. Yes. And so. That's, that's kind of, but, you know, the, the VIX, when I sent this over, it was pretty low. It's starting to rise now, so a lot of things changed this morning. Right. And uh, uh, But the second ch- uh, chart up is, is that SPX VIX ratio. Right. At the time I sent it over, it was making new highs. So I, I didn't think it was going to break out. You know, I, I was hoping it would pull back and it's doing it. Uh, but that ratio now is starting to make lower highs, even though the S&P has made higher highs. So that's starting to diverge. But, you know, before the 
right before the break there, I said, you know, today's volume is probably going to be pretty high today. Oh. And it's a bearish engulfing pattern, but high volume highs almost always are tested, yeah. especially on a, on a daily basis. So I bet at some point today's high is going to be tested, and that may and that may set up the uh, uh, potential next trade. And actually, let's just go to chart three. Here's oh. what I'm thinking what's, what's really going to happen over the next three months. Okay. Uh, the only reason why I'm saying the next three months, we're into the period of the weakest quarter of the year. That starts in July and runs to October. And that's kind of another reason why I pulled back my bullish horns. I'm still bullish. I think there'll be a decent bottom sometime probably in late September or, or October where the market will rally all the way into year end. But yep. between now and, you know, October, I think things can get a little messy. And what I'm thinking of what's happening here, uh, this is a monthly chart of the SPX. And uh, I kind of took some shortcuts here, but anyhow, we only did a 50% retracement going into the October of 2022 low. Yes. And so if you only do a, a 50% retracement, at the minimum, you should at least go back to the old highs. That's right. the minimum. And a lot of times it's a halfway point of the next move up, which gives a much higher target. Okay. So what I'm thinking right now is we're running into the, the February, March, April uh, 2022 trading range there, and we're hitting that trading range. So I'm thinking we're going to, you know, hit hit the top of that trading range, which we did, which we're doing right now, and we're going to pull back to support. Well, support is around what I'm calling the neckline there, which is around 420, because that's where the previous highs were. So we, we had a sign of strength through the previous highs. That sign of strength becomes support uh, at the previous high, and the previous high is 420. So I'm thinking we're going to bang around between 460, 420 over the next, uh, I don't know, several months, you know, a couple of months, whatever, sure. and create what I think is going to be a right shoulder of a head and shoulders bottom. And the right shoulder and left shoulder are usually symmetric in time. Well, turns out we got three months of of uh, yeah the worst quarter, and that left shoulder happens to be three months. So Look I'm at that! Huh? That's what's I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting it up right now as you're speaking, Tim. The right shoulder, right now. No, I can see that. I'm putting it up right as you're speaking right now. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is putting cart before the horse. No, I'm but, with you. you know, things, I got it. That's, yeah, that's a good trade. Change, this would be, but, uh, I mean, if that scenario comes out, that's a beautiful trading market, man. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It will be. Well, I've, I haven't done that statistics yet because you take the bottom of the head up to the neckline, which we're setting at the neckline right now. Right. And you add that onto the neckline, you know, the market could go uh, quite a ways higher. Uh, so here's another interesting statistic. 74% of the time going forgot what date it was. I think it's at least back to 1950. It could be back all the way to 1920. But 74% of the time, uh, 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 the market is up every year, 74% of the time. That's a big number, you know, man. You, yeah, it's a huge number. So you really don't want to bet against the market. It's up 81% of the time if you count the S if you count dividends, and this is on the S&Ps. So you really got to be a perpetual bull market as far as... Uh, the equity market is concerned. Gold market, on the other hand, is just a trading range. It goes right, up, right. comes back down, goes up, right. comes back down. So they're two tight but different markets. Yes. But you, you don't really want to bet against the S&Ps because 74% of the time, uh, if you're short, you're going to be 74% of the time wrong. So, that's pretty so intense. Anyhow. That's a big number, man. Yeah. That's, that's a big yeah, number. Yeah, it's a pretty big number not to bet against it. But, um, but you know, next year, if this turns out to be a head and shoulders bottom, you know, and say we bought them in October around that 420 area. You know, you, you're talking a market that is is going to be yeah, it's it's party uh, time because I I did the rate the the number there is 110 Tim, so that would be uh, five uh, uh, 425 530. <laughs> well, well, you added on to 460. That's where the neckline is. 420 is sport. Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah, okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. you added on to the neckline head. Uh, to the neckline, uh, 416, what, 110? That's what I had, um, yeah, right. Five, so 570. <laughs> party time. That's, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that would be a, a good party time. And all on, and get back to this uh, monthly chart. It, to get that 420 as support, 
At sport, you always see panic. If you don't see panic, it's not a sport. So what I'm saying is all those trend readings, you know, the 10-day, the 20-day, yes. or the 21-day, the 6-3-day, you should see quite a bit of panic right around that 420 area. So when we get there and the trend's blowing out along with the ticks, you know it's going to be support. You know, and you know it's so cool. Out, it was so it's, cool, it's folks, is that now and we know what the number is to look for. I, lo I love these deals, Tim, when, you know, of course, we're all speculating, but when you speculate and you actually have a number and, you know, we know that the last time that we came down, you know, the, the, the fear went up very fast which I can see it go up very fast. I mean, it went up, you know, it's interesting. Today, it didn't really go up in the trend or the tick, but the bottom line nope. is that, man, it was like a razor blade. It just kept going south, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, they get a couple yeah. more days like this, I, I could pitch the exact same thing happening. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, then we go test the highs again because it's a high volume high, then you fall apart, right? Then it's like, okay, you yeah. know, so it's, yeah. yeah. Then, then you start falling apart. Um, and you, you get things, you know, so it's kind of a wedding ring. But anyhow, so as we're going along with our interviews over the next couple, three months here. Yes. When that 420 shows up on the SPX, you know, people should be jumping out. The, well, not jumping out the windows, but, you know, you should see that trend. I'm with you. high right around that range. Yep. Uh, so that would be a high confidence trade. Right. Uh, to put on, you know, so we're, we're not going to put the trade on the breaking of the neckline. You know, like we, they say in the books, you know, we'll be buying at the bottom of the, what I think is potential bottom of the right shoulder, which is that 420 area. Right. So, right. It'd be, it'd be a good trade, too. It's uh, So if we got panic at, at, at that number, I mean, your confidence goes up. That means you can put more money at it. Yeah. So. Stay, stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We're going to uh, finish up with the gold market. Stay right there, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim or Tom Bryan, we do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 258, NASDAQ's off 86, S&Ps are off 32. Okay, Tim, so what, what, what chart would you like to look at? Uh, we can go to chart four. Okay, here uh, we go. Just, just a quick, um, uh, actually, I should, I should have pointed out a little bit more on this chart, but you see that uh, if you look at the volume chart there uh, right below the uh, GDX, you yes. see that big finger out there, that big volume day? Yes. Uh, it happened, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago or Right, I whatever. see it. Yep, I can stick yep. it out like a sore thumb, big time, yep. Yeah, like big thumb, right. Yep. So anyhow, we're, there's a gap there. Yes. And we're testing that gap today. Right. And there's no way we're going to get above that. So what I'm saying is we're probably finding support right here, right now. Right, and this I'm, is cool. Looking on the bigger picture, um, the... And now the bottom one is that 18-day average up-down volume, you know, advanced decline. And the next one is uh, up-down volume, 18-day average. And, uh, and in a nutshell, when, when both those indicators are above minus 10, the market is an uptrend. Right. And this this was, uh, I produced this chart, I don't know, several, three, four hours ago. And we're, well, we're both right around plus 10 uh, on both those indicators. So it doesn't take out all the wiggles of the market, but it does catch the major trend. So we went, just in my opinion, we were just filling the gap that formed here a couple, three weeks ago, and we're testing that gap on lighter volume, and you got both indicators well above minus 10. Um, so I'm thinking this is probably support. It's probably just an ABC down here, and this is leg C of a ABC type thing. So yeah. I don't see any big danger here, I'll put it that way. It's just a, a little bit of a shakeout. Then I think we'll we'll continue higher, which so the I'm, gold I'm market thinking, loves to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. So exactly. I'm thinking, you know, the equity market is probably going to be uh, more of a trading market sideways to down type thing, and where the gold market, I think, uh, some of that money out of the equity market is going to run in the gold market. Hell, I'm kind of determined it, and uh, so I, I'm thinking this gold market is going to remain decent all the way into October. Right. The equity market is going to be uh, you know, back and forth all the way into October. So um, how high highs? Uh, I, I got some other charts. I didn't know how much time I'd have to present them, so I just only presented this one. But I got some other charts on GDX suggesting uh, a move that's going to last a year, maybe two years, from I think it was a March low 
of uh, this year. So I, I, there'll, there'll be some you know declines along the way, pretty big declines, but not breaking new low declines. Right. It'll be something similar what happened in May to July type declines. That may take a month or two or three, but in general, the market will make higher highs, higher lows over the next year, year and a half, or year maybe two years. So, I, I'm telling you, man, I love these indicators you have, Tim. I can't, yeah, yeah. I, I really do, because you know what happens, folks. Okay, what what Tim does here, okay, and this is what's so cool is that you know you, you're putting a couple different deals together, so there's not one deal that you're looking at, and you know. When you're a technician, that's a big deal, man, because your probability goes up pretty dramatically, man. You know, and in particular, we know that, I mean, other people don't use them, which makes it even better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wondered, uh, you know, if you ever know something from the market, when a lot of these indicators out of these books that we all have read, if you're a technician. Right. You know. When they, when they all kind of line up, you know, they all blow up at the same time. Yes. So I always kind of wanted to go something different than than what is nobody else uses. Exactly. And if nobody else uses it, there's, there's, you know, that field is not crowded. When the field gets kind of crowded in an indicator, chances are it's going to fail. Right. And uh, so, so I kind of went a lot of indicators that nobody really uses. And uh, so I stumbled around, you know, trying to find ways to, uh, to look, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, so no, I for sure. with this. No. And, and you know what's what's so cool is that the the you know of course you've been doing it for a long period of time, but it, like so picture if Grand Blue was sitting there with a, with a you know he, he probably intuitively just knew that it's fear and greed. I mean, and fear and greed really runs the world too, Tim, which is amazing, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, the, the yeah. reality is is that you know once you can get understand that in the marketplace. Well, it's pretty cool, man. You know what I mean? I remember, yeah. listen, I, this, is, this is a crazy story. Um, and I have patience beyond belief now, but I remember uh, we were speaking, and what, what would happen in the 90s, folks, we were, we were on from three to four, and I had two other hosts, Peter and Mark, and we would be trading like banshees, man. <laughs> because that was, we had an edge then because we had an instant machine and all this stuff. And anyway, make a long story short, right? I remember the first time you said to me, um, we were doing something, and you said, yeah, this thing wants to go down there, man. You know, it's like, you know, two or three months. I said to you, two or three months? <laughs> what, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> I mean, you know, because my gauge was like, you know, you know, Two or three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> 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 and once I caught on to that, though, man, you know, your probability goes up a lot more because you, you really do look at markets differently. Like, you know, that, that term about building cause. Building cause is so important in the market, whether you want to go up or down. It really is. Right, right, right. You're, you're exactly right. You know, in that, that trading range we had, uh, you know, uh, this year, the end of last year, you know, went sideways for a whole year. We were talking about it on your radio. Right. Went sideways from May to May. Right. And uh, right. so it was going to either go up or it's going to go down. Right. You know, and, and but you put, you know, you throw the trend in there. Yeah. With all that trend readings that were high all in that level, you know, the, your, your odds are extremely in your favor that the market was going to bust higher. Right. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, so... It was still a hard, you know, all trades are kind of hard. If, oh, yeah. If it's starting to be easy for you, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, and if, the, if the execution, you know, is too quick, folks, you know, not all the time, but if the execution is too quick, you know, if you have a hard time getting an execution many times, that's, that's, like, that's a good sign. That's, you know, that's what it comes down to, which is pretty amazing, man. So, yeah. Well, this so, is certainly going to be interesting on, you know, this little pullback here and see how this thing shakes out because I, I can definitely you know, see the aspect. I mean, we've already done 73 million in the SPY, and the first high that we hit a couple days ago only had 65, so we blew that away with volume for sure, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, so, okay. Yeah, they'll knock all the shorts out of here probably on a test. Yeah. You know, and maybe that test will happen next week. I don't know. Then uh, maybe we, you know, we'll, we'll announce live on it or something. Yeah, we go from but there. I think we're, we're, I think we're at some point we're going to see 420 
you know, right. uh, which is not a huge decline, but no, but it's a good, it's a good trade, man. It's, you know, it's, well, it's, it's a good few months. But, hey, listen, I love it when markets go up and down. I love consolidations. Consoli big consolidations are beautiful. They're huge, man. Just yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, man, you have a great weekend, safe weekend, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thank you.